Hey guys, Matt here again with UBJ.com. And uh, today, what I really want to do is kind of put together a little video on keloids. I've gotten a lot of questions about keloids, uh, what they are, what causes them, how to treat them. So I kind of want to give a little talk about um, how I see keloids and how I see uh, the best way to get rid of them and what exactly they are and what exactly causes them. First off, I really want to just kind of put out there that keloid is kind of a slang term for this type of scar tissue you usually get with piercings. The technical term is hypertrophic scar tissue. That's like, you know, within the industry you'll hear that word used a lot or, or those words used a lot. And you know, that's one of them. There's actually a few other technical terms too, um, depending on exactly what type of hypertrophic scar tissue it is or keloid it is. There's definitely a few different variations. But for the purposes of this video and for the purpose of keeping everything like really simple and just cut and dry, we're just gonna call it a keloid and then we'll go from there. All right, so what is a keloid? A keloid for the most part is a tiny little scar tissue bump that you're gonna see um, usually on the entrance and the exit of the piercing. Uh, there's a few piercings that they're really, really common with. Uh, the first one being a nostril piercing. I feel like over half of the people that get their nose pierced um, at some point during the healing process gets a bit of a keloid bump or a little scar tissue bump. Um, another really common one you see is, is cartilage um, and industrial piercings and stuff of that nature. Um, so a keloid bump can actually form on any piercing for that matter, okay? Uh, it doesn't have to just be a nostril or cartilage or anything else. I've seen them on navel piercings, I've seen them on lip piercings, I've seen it on just about every piercing that there is. So what exactly causes the keloid? For the most part, and the way I like to break it down, is any piercing you have, it has a, has a healing period, okay? So let's say like a nose piercing is two to three months. A navel piercing might be six to eight months, um, but they all have an initial healing period. During the entire healing period, you have a scab inside that piercing, okay? So think of that scab as something you wanna keep intact during the entire healing period. If you have, a, let's say, a cut or a scratch on your arm and you have a scab on it and you sit there and pick at that scab all day, every day, what happens? eventually your body stops forming scab material and it starts forming scar tissue. So if you're constantly picking at it and playing with it, that scar tissue is gonna build up and build up and build up, all right? So the same thing goes with a body piercing. A body piercing during the healing period has a scab on there and if you're constantly moving or rotating or spinning that jewelry around, it's like picking out a scab. And what's gonna happen is eventually your body's gonna stop forming scab material and it's gonna start forming scar tissue. What happens to that scar tissue is it slowly starts bubbling out the top and the bottom, okay? Because inside that piercing, it's, everything's so tight, there's nowhere for it to really go. So that's when you start noticing that bubbling out the top and bottom. When you get a piercing, say a nose piercing, you start getting that bump on there, it's just scar tissue kind of bubbling out because it has nowhere to go and it's building up inside that piercing, okay? So that's a really simple way to kind of look at it. That's not always the case of what could be causing it. There's several other things. They all kind of fall back in a, support that whole idea of what causes the keloid. So let's say if you're using too harsh of a cleaner, that can also cause a keloid, okay? If you're using too harsh of a cleaner, um, hydrogen peroxide, alcohol, neosporin, bactine, all those funky things, what they do is they go in and dissolve everything away. And um, when they dissolve that away, they're just eating that scab up and your body's forming scar tissue instead of scab. What happens when you get that scar tissue inside there, especially after excessive amounts of it building up, it starts bubbling out the top. So with that being said, you know, really, really important, no harsh bottle cleaners. And I know I've said this in a million videos before, salt water soaks only, okay? Now, another thing that could be causing keloids is, you know, if you're sleeping on it, or if you're bumping and knocking it, or catching and snagging it, you know, trauma to your piercing can definitely cause them also, okay? So say you have your nose, you're washing your face, and you catch it and hook it, it only takes a few times, and that could cause it. All right, now, um, say you have a cartilage or industrial piercing. If you're sleeping on it for eight hours a night, every single night, that's a lot of trauma to your piercing, and that can also cause the keloid bump. And then two other things that could cause it that, that come to the top of my, my mind right now is uh, the way it's pierced. You know, if you don't get it pierced properly and maybe the angle's off and it's going through an excessive amount of tissue, that could cause the keloid. Um, and also having uh, less than or low grade body jewelry in your piercing can also cause it. Um, so maybe your, your piercing is 
constantly reacting to the type of metal that is inside uh, the piercing. So if you get a nose piercing done and you put some really cheap jewelry in there, maybe your body is just having a reaction to that jewelry and it's in a constant state of reaction. And once again, it's not forming scab material inside, it's forming scar tissue, it's just bubbling out the top. That can cause a cuboid bump also, okay guys? So a uh, few things, you know, when you get a piercing, really important, you know, don't spin it, rotate it. Be really careful not to catch it, snag it, no sleeping on it, none of that funky stuff. Also, no hydrogen peroxide, no alcohol, um, no antibacterial soaps, like none of that either. It's all way too harsh for it, okay? So there's a few things, and there's other things too, okay? But that's just like a few, like, I would say the main causes of those bumps, all right? So uh, you might be asking, how do you treat it? For the most part, as long as your jewelry is good, um, your piercing is properly placed and is straight and not angled whatsoever, then for the most part, salt water soaks are the best thing you can do to tackle that keloid bump. Just soak in salt water once or twice a day, uh, you know, and once again, I know we've done videos on this, but I'll really quickly, you know, get a gallon of distilled water, um, you know, a dollar in the drinking water section, any grocery store. From there, go to the salt section. You want non-iodized sea salts. Pick up some non-iodized sea salt. When you get home, four teaspoons of that salt and that gallon of distilled water, all right? Shake it up. That gives you a big jug to keep around the house. All right, guys, so once you have that, once or twice a day, take like a coffee cup or a shot glass. Remember to always use glass or porcelain, never plastic. Um, and paper, don't use paper whatsoever. Paper cups are bad. Shot glass or coffee cup, fill it up with the salt water, microwave for a few seconds so it's like barely body temperature. And if, if it's your nose we're talking about, lean forward, dunk your nose in there. Let it soak for a few minutes. If it's your ear, do the same thing, or whatever piercing it is, navel, nipple, whatever. Submerge the piercing for, usually they say seven to 15 minutes is, is um, ample time to do a proper soak. The next thing, you know, tea tree oil. Um, you probably already, if, if you're watching this video, you probably already Googled uh, Kiwi bumps a little bit and saw a lot of uh, people talking about tea tree oil. I think tea tree oil is a really good product to use to kind of um, help get rid of bumps. The only tricky thing with tea tree oil is you want to be really careful with it. You want to be really cautious with it. Don't go getting some tea tree oil and just slather it all over your piercing, all right? It is really harsh. And that harshness, you know, it's gonna chew up the inside of your piercing. The tea tree oil is ideal for putting on top of the bump itself, all right? Not inside the piercing. So what that tea tree oil is gonna do, it's kind of like an astringent. It's gonna suck and pull moisture out of that bump, which is gonna kind of dry it out a little bit. And that's what you want, all right? So with the tea tree oil, um, the proper application would be, um, I usually say right before you go to bed and right when you wake up in the morning. So before you go to bed, um, once again, we'll, we'll talk about your nose. Before you go to bed, you take a little bit of that tea tree oil, put it on your finger. You're gonna barely coat the bump with that tea tree oil, okay? Then go to bed. All right, but also make sure you're being really careful not to get it inside the piercing, just on the bump. Go to bed. In the morning, you'll notice a little dry skin, okay? So take some tweezers or something, you can peel that dry skin off. So what that dry skin is, is the tea tree oil drying that bump out. And it's gonna dry it out in ever so tiny layers. But those tiny layers build up over time to where the bump eventually goes away. Um, so in the morning when you wake up and you see that dry skin, you barely peel it off. Um, and you take a little bit more tea tree oil, you put it on that bump again, okay? And then hopefully that evening, you might notice a little bit more dry skin and you peel that off, put a little bit more on there. That's how I go about tackling a keloid bump with, with tea tree oil. And I think tea tree oil is probably the best thing aside from salt water soaps to kind of get rid of it. Um, and then also making sure you have the proper jewelry and you're not bumping and knocking it and you're keeping trauma down to a minimum, if none at all, okay? So hopefully that helps you guys out. You know, uh, that's the way I kind of look at keloid bumps. And you know, it's there's nothing scientific about those terms. I just kind of try to break it down in a way that might be a little bit more easier for you guys to understand. One thing I definitely want to say to you guys is, you know, I'm a professional piercer. I've been doing this for 17 years. And everything I've been talking about here is stuff based on my personal experience. And also like uh, things I've heard from other colleagues in the industry that are professional body piercers. So if this video helps you, awesome, that's great. But what I definitely want you to make sure you do, if you have access to a professional piercer in your area, is to go in there and ask them what they feel it is and how they feel you should take care of it, okay? Because you know, if it's like a metal allergy problem, um, hopefully you're not going home and treating it like it's a trauma problem, okay? So by going to a professional piercer, they can tell you if your angles are good, if your jewelry's good, if it looks like it's just something caused by trauma, uh, you know, and so forth and so forth. So uh, definitely like use this video for informational purposes, but also don't forget to go and check out your professional piercer, try and get it diagnosed and looked at. If you are having uh, keloid problems, you know, 
The professional theory is going to help you kind of eliminate any variables that could be causing that problem. Um, Most of being the variables that we just talked about and they're gonna help you solve that problem and they're gonna help you get rid of that bump as quickly and as soon as possible. And hopefully that helped you guys walk away learning something from this video. So thank you so much you guys for watching again as always and I'll see you guys next time.